This definitely wasn't the start to the day I envisioned having. Been running around all morning, and uh, we are still in Rioja at about uh, 12 o'clock, so. Northern Argentina was proving to be a bit of a challenge. I've been running around all day trying to exchange these Chilean pesos, and nobody seems to want them, so. Yeah, uh-oh, this guy's. I'm getting yelled at. Okay, I'm, oh, pardon. Our credit cards were useless, and the maximum ATM withdrawal per day amounted to approximately $30 US. Not supposed to park here. <laughs> for a modest $15 fee. Okay, apparently around here somewhere there's a clothing shop where the woman at the bank told me they exchanged money. It's supposed to be a sign in the window, but so far I'm not seeing it. A lot of clothing shops here though, so I have a lot to choose from. But luckily, our persistence paid off. And after a horrible exchange rate, we cashed in our unwanted Chilean pesos for some nearly worthless Argentinian pesos, and we're back on the road. So we're basically here right now, and we're gonna head up into the park. Now, if we're planning on camping here at all tonight, we're actually gonna have to get supplies here, which isn't much of a town. The next gas would be in Via Union, but that's north of the park. So we kind of need to figure out where we're staying tonight. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure out here where we can get some supplies. Yeah, I mean, it's a town. It's not much of a town. I think there's a small shop right next door there. Well, we're going to we're going to be heading through town here in a minute, so right, well, let's see what we find. All right. Our rough plan departing La Rioja included a pit stop in the picturesque Parque Provincial Ischigualasto before heading north on Highway 76 across Route 40 and through Via Union, where the road continues high into the Andes to the remote Pircas Negras border crossing. But Chile was not our final destination. Somewhere this side of the border was an unmarked track leading north to El Volcanito de Troya, a remote and little known volcanic feature that caught Chad's eye when he was reading a trip report from an Argentinian writer by the name of Fede Pache. Fede and a group of friends had completed an impressive off-piste ride, linking highways 76 and 60 far to the north through a remote and trackless section of the Andes. And while attempting to follow their tracks would most certainly be a suicide mission, Chad was confident we could make the mini caldera So with our pockets full of pesos, we set off, doing our best to take every advantage of the rare opportunity for food and fuel along the way. La Torre. Yeah. Y un pueblito. Tres kilómetros más adelante, a la derecha está el parado ruta 150 y la Torre. Oh, okay. Kiosco y mini mercado. Oh, perfecto. Okay, bien. Bien, yeah, we'll just go through. Muchas gracias. Que les vaya bien, eh? Yeah. Suerte. Tengo un buen día. Finding provisions was proving difficult, 
And the closer we got to the park, the thinner our options grew. Okay, Pasa. We don't really have anything. No? I think we're gonna have to live off the land. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to hunt. It's pretty sparse in there, huh? They even have beer? Not that I saw. Oof, that's rough. But just past the junction with Highway 150, Chad spotted a small restaurant on the side of the road. We got food now, so we should be good to go. You can still hunt if you want. <laughs> Stocked up on empanadas and beer, we set off in search of a campsite and immediately launched into the good stuff. Can you find something for the kickstand? Oh, yeah. You put the kickstand there. I don't like my odds of getting through this rut. It's a bit much. Absolutely nothing up this canyon except for Winaco tracks everywhere. I think this place has some potential. We'd have to walk the camping gear down because I'm not going to ride over this. After a quick tour of the tunnels and twisties of Ischigualasto, we made camp and set off to explore our little canyon and collect firewood. We interrupt this broadcast with a quick public service announcement. Never set up camp in a dry riverbed. Now, back to your regularly scheduled program. Yeah. Find ourselves a campsite. There's nobody out here. We're totally isolated. And I have beer. What more could you ask for? <laughs> Except for looking at the lens. I'm always supposed to look at the lens. It's hard not to look at myself, though, because I'm so damn beautiful. The bright one's Venus right there. Right there. We woke the next morning, packed camp, and retraced our steps back to Highway 76, making the occasional pit stop to explore, as much as we were allowed. The sites of Talampaya National Park. Park 
Parque Talampaya is home to UNESCO-recognized archaeological and paleontological sites, boasting an impressive museum, petroglyphs, and soaring sandstone formations. But park regulations and our gas range limited our options, so we continued pushing north toward our last hope for food and fuel via Union. Just short of town and the junction of Highway 76 and the famed Route to 40, we stopped for what would be our last proper meal for a few days and a bit of clothes shopping. No, 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 necesito. No, no, hay, no, hay room. no, hay espacio. no, Before meandering into town to top off our fuel tank and auxiliary bladder. And do our best to scrape together a menu at the only store open on a Sunday afternoon, the General Five and Dime. Strapped and packed with as much fuel and food as we could carry, we bid farewell to the vestiges of civilization and set off for what would be some of our favorite riding in all of South America. Alright, so it begins. Woo! Lordy. You ready? Yep. Just don't fall down the embankment. <laughs> <laughs> Can't lose it yet. Alright, let's go.
Okay, I didn't know about this refugio. Yeah. I was going to keep going up to Laguna Brava, but maybe it's better we just stop here. After a stunning ride up the Santo Domingo Ravine, we arrived at Refugio del Peñón, a rock shelter constructed in 1873, sitting at 3,612 meters, 11,850 feet above sea level. I can't see a damn thing. All right, so here's, here's this refugio. It's kind of like the rock hut. I'm so happy, so freezing. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cold, isn't it? You have heated hand grips, so. <laughs> I just turned them on, actually. <laughs> so it's just kind of a secondary shelter, I think. Ow! Oh! Ugh. Watch the. Yeah, I just crunched my helmet. Ah. Jesus, I'm gonna collapse the whole fucking roof. It helps to be short. Yeah, it sure does. You can stand straight up. Yeah. All right. Well, I think just based on the lateness of the hour, this is probably our best bet. And I'm I'm hoping that's not weather coming over the Andes there. Despite being a mere 25 kilometers from our original destination. We decided to call it a night and make this 150-year-old rock hut our home for the evening. actually quite concerned about this my floating front disc the metal on the uh, the inner hub has actually started to fatigue causing quite a bit of slop it's fatiguing on all of them and it makes a hell of a racket going down the trail as well that is way way too much play after our morning rituals of coffee and bike maintenance, we packed up and continued the slow ride toward Laguna Brava. We ascended onto the arid Andean Puna, the official designation of these high altitude plateaus, characterized by year round low temperatures and strong winds. These plains, punctuated by shallow salt lakes, lagoons, and wetlands, are considered one of the most important bird habitats in all of Argentina. Undoubtedly, due in large part to the lack of human presence or activity in the region. This definitely ranks as one of the more wild spots I've been on the planet. <laughs> wild is good. Wild is good. And there's nobody out here. Yeah, notice that. <laughs> Contemplating the vastness of the void, we continued along the shores of the lake when we encountered something entirely unexpected. Asphalt at a junction that, according to our maps, shouldn't exist. There might be another refugio down that way. 
way. It might be up this way. We're we're going this way, but. Had we the gas to spare, we would have gladly explored this closed road leading nowhere. But we had to ignore the siren songs in the distance, or risk being consumed by the puna. We continued along this unexpected, although not entirely unappreciated, section of amazingly smooth tarmac until reaching an anonymous pass cut precariously into the crumbling mountainside where the asphalt disappeared for good. We started our descent toward the pin on our map, denoting the unnamed track that would take us further into the void. But along the way, we encountered something else completely unexpected. The Pircas Negras border crossing. 25 kilometers from the Chilean border and potentially the end of our ride. I don't, this isn't the border, so I don't know why there's a border checkpoint. Well, all I know is that it's freezing. We're up in altitude. It's really windy. We haven't seen a person or even a discarded car. Yeah. There's like... We're out in the middle of nowhere, and even this border station appears to be closed. Yeah, there aren't any plants or even like wood to make a fire. <laughs> Oh, and this is the government of Chile. Oh, Hope we're not back in Chile. Oh, no. <laughs> Where the f are we? We're not supposed to be at the border. But luckily for us, the border station was abandoned, and eerily so. Yeah, I did not expect this at all. This is strange, but it's completely closed. There's nobody here. But our curiosity and the lack of fresh drinking water got the best of us. So we decided to explore. You know, if this place is closed down, they might not have potable water. When originally planning our route, we failed to realize that the many lagoons dotting the Altiplano were in fact hypersaline. Uh, hell. Uh, damn. Far surpassing the average salinity of seawater. In other words, you can't drink it. Oops. It's completely abandoned and locked up. Certainly a bit of a blunder on our part. That's empty. But this facility, both unanticipated and out of place. <clears throat> nope. At least by our account. Completely empty could be our salvation. She out there. So water? I don't know. You want to taste it? 